Hey there, welcome back to our digital artificial playground. Today, we're about to embark on an accelerating journey that'll enhance any current AI image generation workflow. Remember those incredible flux models and the quantized GUNF and NF4 files we talked about recently? The ones that let you run these powerful models even on low VRAM devices? Well, get ready because we're taking things to the next level with an awesome image to image workflow. That's right, instead of starting from scratch with just text prompts, we're going to show you how to use your own images as a springboard for AI creativity. Now, you might be wondering, why even bother with image to image when text to image is already so good? Well, let me tell you, this workflow opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. Imagine taking any image, maybe a cool photo you took, a sketch you made, or even just a screenshot, and then using the power of AI to generate endless variations of it, all while keeping the essence of your original image intact. Want to blend different art styles together? Add some fantastical elements to your photos? Or maybe completely reimagine an existing visual? Image to image is your secret weapon. And the best part is you have a ton of control of the process. You can fine tune how much the original image influences the variations. And yes, you can even sprinkle in your favorite loras to really dial in the style and feel of your creations. This technique is a godsend for maintaining visual consistency across a variety of images. One base image, your style reference, and voila, instant visual harmony. And don't fret, I've got your back. You'll find the workflow link nestled in the description below, ready for you to download and unleash your inner AI Picasso. So, are you ready to push the boundaries of AI-assisted artistry? Let's dive in and paint the future one pixel at a time. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on more awesome AI content. All right, everyone. So you've got the workflow downloaded and you're ready to get started? Perfect. Now, if you need a refresher on installing Comfy UI, the Flux GUNF nodes or anything like that, be sure to check out my previous Flux video. I'll pop a link down below. It's a step-by-step -step guide to get everything up and running. For this workflow, we're going to use the Comfy UI Manager node, which makes installing everything else as easy as can be. If you don't have it already, just get clone the Comfy UI Manager repo right into your custom nodes folder and restart Comfy UI. Again, my Flux NF4 tutorial covers the process in detail if you need it. Okay, so once you're on the Comfy UI web page, go ahead and load up the workflow. It's called Flux Image to Image Workflow. You can grab it from the Google Drive link I provided in the description below. Now, if you see those pesky red missing nodes messages, don't panic. The Comfy UI Manager has our back. Just hop over to the Manager tab, click Install Missing Custom Nodes, and install each one on the list. Click the Restart button to finalize the installation and reload Comfy. And hey, while we're at it, let's do a quick Comfy UI update just to make sure we're rocking the latest and updated version of Comfy. Once that's done, go ahead and restart Comfy UI. It'll grab all the remaining dependencies for those custom nodes during the restart. All right, time to load up on models. Head back to the Comfy UI Manager, and this time, click Model Manager. You'll see a whole library of Comfy UI compatible models ready to download directly to your models directory. We'll need at least five models to get this party started. First up, let's grab our Flux GUNF models. Just type Flux GUNF in the search and choose either the dev or Schnell quantized GUNF model, whichever one you prefer. There's many quantized versions you can choose. And for this video, I'll again be using the Q4 version of the dev model. Next, we need our clip models. 
So search for FP8 and install the Google T5 FP8 clip model. Then look for and install the Clip L by Comfy Anonymous. Now let's find the Flux V model. Search for Flux V and install the Flux.1 V model. And last but not least, we need an upscaler. So search for full and install the full hardy model, which I find to be a pretty decent upscale model. Now, unfortunately, the model manager doesn't have a huge selection of Loris, but no worries. We can grab those easily from Hugging Face or Civit AI. Just download your Lora of choice. I'll be using the X Labs Realism Lora in this video and then drag and drop that file right into your lore folder within your models folder. Easy peasy. Once you've got everything installed, give Comfy UI a couple of refreshes. And then let's select our models for each node. Just click the arrows to choose the right model and double check that everything is hooked up correctly. All right, the moment of truth has arrived. Let's generate some images. Go ahead and upload your base image and then type in your positive prompt. Now, if you wanna keep things similar to the original image, it's a good idea to write a really descriptive prompt that accurately captures what's in the image. Pro tip, you can use a multimodal vision model like ChatGPT, Sonnet, or even a local model to analyze your image and generate a description for you that you can use as your prompt. Just copy parts of the description given by the model and paste it in your positive prompt field. Next, you can adjust the number of steps in the basic scheduler node. I find that 20 steps usually strikes a good balance between quality and speed but I guess you can never go wrong adding more steps. Now, the denoise strength setting in the K sampler node is where things get interesting. This determines how much the original image will be altered during generation. A value of one means maximum noise and can potentially change the image completely. As you get closer to zero, you're adding less noise so the generated image will stay closer to the original. Now with image to image, you'll rarely want to go all the way to one. Usually you want to preserve at least some elements of the original. I find that values between 0.50 and 0.91 work well for subtle changes, but feel free to experiment and see what you like best. To control how many images are generated per run, adjust the batch size in the rebatch lens node. Instead of generating one image at a time, you can crank it up to four or more. Just keep in mind that larger batch sizes will increase generation times. Oh, and I almost forgot. I've added an upscaler node to boost those decoded images to a crisp X4 resolution. If you'd rather skip the upscaling, simply connect the blue vague decode image node directly to the save image node. Once you've got your settings dialed in, hit that Q prompt button in the top right corner and let the magic happen. Don't be afraid to experiment with different prompts and settings. It might take a few tries to find the sweet spot. And here's a bonus tip. Once you discover a style you love, make sure to note the seed value. You can then save it and switch the control after generation setting to fix to recreate that style whenever you want. So there you have it, a powerful image-to-image -image workflow using Flux models, all within the awesome Comfy UI interface. I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about the workflow, you can leave them down in the comments. I'll take a look whenever I get a chance. And as always, if you found this video helpful, 
hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more AI art adventures. Until next time, happy creating.